Hello and welcome to this special broadcast. Hero Motor Corp, the world's largest producer of motorcycles, has a challenge before it. The challenge is to maintain the leadership, the pole position and transition to electric vehicles. Very recently, the company announced a management change at the board level. The promoter and chairman of the company, Pavan Munjal, stepped aside as CEO, making way for the CFO, Niranjan Gupta, to take up the role of the CEO. Why is this important for Hero Motor Corp? What does this mean about the future of the company? With us right now is Nirajan Gupta himself, the new CEO for his first interview with CNBC TV18. Nirajan, thank you so much for joining us here at Thanks your uh, Gurgaon plant. The factory line is uh, working non-stop. Give us a sense, first of all, why this change took place? Why did Mr. Pavan Munjal step aside as CEO to have you in the driver's seat? Thanks, Parikshit, for, uh, for this. Look, uh, the way we look at it is that every company undergoes a change. And it's the right time for our company to make that change. The company started in 1985, has grown leaps and bounds to be where it is, which is world number one for so many years in a row, and a market leader. And now we are embarking on a new era where there's a change in the guard but the, there's a legacy which is very strong and we're going to build on that and embark on the new next unbeatable chapter. Right. Uh, as we walk at your uh, Gurgaon plant, give us a sense of what are the expectations of the Hero Motor Corp board from you as you take up this role? So I would answer in a typical auto language that board expects me and the team to change the gears and that's exactly what you're going to see. Right. Uh, how would you be driving the change across Hero Motor Corp? What does this mean for your distribution strategy, fiscal prudence? What are some of your key priorities? See, we've got a lot of strengths. I think one thing is like the trust of customers. We've got a 110 million customer base. We've got the scale of sourcing, manufacturing. Uh, we've got the deepest and widest distribution network. We got a brand which has got huge potential. I think these are the strengths on which we will build our future. Of course, some of this will need to be refreshed because if we keep doing the same things in the same way as we have done before, our results and outcome cannot be different. And the expectation is to have now a differential and, and a projection and direction uh, which is more in speed. Uh, and in terms of the outcome and results as well. For instance, again, in terms of strategy, we are talking about, we have been very good in defending our market share. In the core category, our role will be to expand the pie. Because we're already leaders, so there's no point trying to just defend, recover, or gain a bit and lose a bit. There, our role is to expand the category and expand the pie. And India and the world has got huge potential. The second thing will be win in new segments. And I would call out just one of them. There are many. Premium, for instance. Uh, that's a big pie in which we need to win. Right. And you will see a lot of actions on that front that's coming out. Right. Third, I would say, is build leadership in EV. Because right. that's a new segment that's coming up. Yeah. And we've already taken lots of strides in that. And the focus will be on that. And we're singling out a few ones. Doesn't mean that these are the only ones in terms of the business priorities. And of course, the way we are going to do this is by focusing on people on one hand and customers on the other. Right. Uh, so, following the announcement of you being made the CEO, there were, there were other restructuring measures that took place at the company as well, including BRS. Uh, why was that done? How many employees have taken that? And uh, why is it important for the company? So, Parikshit, from time to time, Every company has to go through refreshing, talent churn, in order to ensure that the talent is future ready and future fit. We had not done that in Hero for a long time. And therefore, we felt the need to actually refresh our talent so that it provides, as I said, the talent needs to be fit for the next five, seven, 10 years time. And it was that exercise which was done, which was the management VRS. In the spirit of our philosophy of care, it was done with a very industry-leading package which was handed out to people. Overall, around 
of the staff took the VRS and that paves the way for the future uh, in terms of building the organization, much simpler organization, de-layered, simplified, which will ensure that the speed at which we move will be much faster than what we have been doing. Right, so you're saying 10% of the staff has taken BRS. Uh, is the exercise over or will that be done again in a few months? So the current exercise is over. Uh, what's very important to understand is that the focus will, continue, will be more and more on the outcome and performance. So we'll make it far more performance driven and outcome driven organization than an activity or action driven organization. Right, so that is your priority, to make it a performance driven organization. Right, now speaking in terms of your distribution strategy, you mentioned three or four pillars that you would be working on. Let's begin with distribution. How do you plan to change that? So firstly, I'm so proud to be taking over as a CEO of a company which has got unparalleled distribution network. We've got dealers who've been there for years. Uh, we reach out to the deepest and the widest corners of the country so that we provide mobility to masses, which is what our motto had been so far. Having said that, as you know, that any strength also requires refreshing and churn. The new generation wants a different retail experience. Premium, where we want to win, uh, requires a different retail experience as well as different service experience. So what we are going to do is to first do a facelift of our current dealers. We are calling it Hero 2.0. And this will be a change in the VI, a change, a bit of change in the layout, the way it looks, the spacing inside. It's essentially even some manpower training, essentially to ensure that when you walk in into the store, you are getting a very modern retail experience, which is more aligned to the next gen and which is what we're going to change. So this 2.0 will be across 500 plus stores in the next six to eight quarters. Right. So you will see that changing. It will have lots of element of digital also in it, embedded. So that's kind of a modern experience. This is only for existing stores? This is for the existing stores. Right. On top of that, as we are rolling out, you heard from us that uh, this coming year, we'll see the maximum number of premium launches as compared to any other year in Hero's history. How many premium stores would you be adding? Well, we want to move at really high speed, but I would say, let's say tentatively, the target would be around 100 plus stores uh, by March. By March next year. So within this fiscal, 100 new premium stores, yes, yes. and that will be primarily for motorcycles only. All premium products. So I won't call out as a motorcycle or scooter, but all premium products, we will provide that. Including the BIDA. Okay. Uh, just uh, to speak about Harley Davidson yeah. specifically, yeah. this motorcycle that has been developed, and I think the company has announced this also. This is a 420cc motorcycle that is being uh, that is going to be launched. So let's wait for exact features and engine capacity of the motorcycle. What is the role of both companies in developing this motorcycle? It has been jointly developed. So primarily at our at our R&D center with inputs from Harley coming in uh, because obviously A, the advantage is a brand association and second, because they know the customer of that segment well. So in terms of styling, designing, XYZ. So both the teams have collaborated very well. And when we launch this and announce the launch date, you will hear more from both the teams. Right, uh, will this be cross-batched as well? Will you be selling this motorcycle as Hero Motocop? In India? So on the same platform, yes, there'll be a brand under Harley and there will be a brand uh, which will be bagged under Hero Motocop as well. But both the uh, products, by the way, are pretty much part of the same HMCL PNL because we are licensee for the brand in India. So it's pretty or part of the same PNL. It's just that there'll be two brands which will be operating under our stable. Right. And uh, for exports, will both be exported to uh, global markets or only will only the Hero Motor Cop motorcycle would be exported? So as far as the Harley badge is concerned, right now it's for India. And as far as the badge that will be on the same platform, that of course would be for India and exports both. Uh, both the companies are in discussion for taking this partnership 
uh, to even wider and deeper levels. Right. Uh, is there possibility of making more bikes together in future? Maybe assembling more of Harley Davidson motorcycles in India? There's always a possibility because collaborations always start small. And I would say we've not started small, we've started big by putting bikes in a segment, uh, which is one of the most, one of the largest premium segment, most profitable segment. Um, and both the teams are very happy. And we'll then, with starting on this base, we'll continue to discuss all other business opportunities. Right. On that note, we are going to take a short break, but don't go anywhere. When you return, we'll continue talking to Niranjan Gupta, the new CEO of Hero Motor Corp, about the company's electric vehicle plans to ramp up the sale of the Vida scooter to 100 plus cities, exports, also how the slowdown in global markets is affecting the brand. Don't go anywhere, that's coming up on the other side.